This is the Russian dynamite Masha Slamovich. Becca here. This is not America's sweetheart Davian. It's Billy Starks and the super fly guy Trayvon Jordan. This is the fly side fly Jalen Brandon. Hardcore princess Jules Malone. Hi there, this is the bubblegum princess Alexia Nicole. This is the Brazilian Wonder Woman Christy Jane. This is the baddest black belt Chennai Kai. This is Kid Bandit. The smash hit Joel Bateman. This is Robin Renegade. Cody Hawk. Brutal Bob Evans. And you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world. Hello, 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 and welcome to the show. It's Wrestling With Entertainment, the only audio experience on the web today. Previewing and reviewing the latest shows from WWE, AEW, New Japan, and everything in between every Saturday, and interviewing all your favorite wrestlers every Tuesday and Wednesday on YouTube and CastBox, sponsored by Rogue Energy and Player One coffee. I am of course your host, James J, alongside Kaliku Yas. Daylight saving time sucks. That is all. You could say that again. And uh, we are not being joined by school uh, this week, but it was a good week for Wrestling Wit, as we interviewed um, last week, uh, Ken Zane and uh, Jim Melancholy, uh, two people from two very different parts of the world. Um, fantastic to um, talk to them, get to know them, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, wrestling will come their way uh, sooner rather than later, uh, specifically Jen. Um, and you could definitely go into uh, the archives to check those out. Um, this upcoming uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, specifically uh, Tuesday, we have Jeremy Prophet, a Canadian, one of the top wrestlers from Canada, um, done just about everything you can possibly do in Canada, uh, and even competing um, on AEW. Um, competing in the, night, the Nightmare Factory, we talk all of that in a lot more. And on the 20th, Wednesday, um, we have the Godfather of Swole. Um, he's um, on my, in my neck of the woods, and we talk about um, can, starting wrestling a little later in life. Um, competing at the Golden One Center. His son starting to pro wrestle as well, and even his daughter. Um, so definitely uh, check that one out as well. But I believe we have some clips right now. Oh, my absolute favorite is Christian Cage. Okay. With, 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 without a doubt, for, for in-ring wrestling from bell to bell, Christian Cage. And I don't think there's anybody that comes close to, to, to his storytelling, to his, uh, his in-ring work. Everything about it, so to the emotional roller coaster he takes people on, and he was one of the few people I didn't get a chance to talk to um, leading up to the match. And then, as we're walking to what they call in the WWE the gorilla position, the standby, uh, Jessica goes down the hole and she passes Christian, and then she begins to panic. She's like, "Oh, he's there! Jeremy's going to start talking to him." And of course, I start talking to him. Like, like I said, his work should be praised on the level of, of Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. And it's only because he wasn't pushed to the WWE title that people, you know, consider him like a mid Carter. But if you watch his work, it is so fantastic. There is, to me, no better in-ring performer in my lifetime that I've ever seen than Christian and then I got the opportunity to talk with him and we start talking and then Jessica's like, our match is now. We have to get out there. They're telling us to go out there now. <laughs> so said a, said a quick goodbye to him and then right thing. And, and I was telling her, this is fun. So, you and your son tag team? Yeah, that's in the works. Uh, that's in the works. We want to be, uh, you know, uh, a team and uh, see what we can do with that. And then, you know, he can break up on his own as soon as he's ready and that, that would be awesome. That's a, that would be a dream come true to team with him. And, I mean, are you more excited to team with him or be on the opposite side of the ring with him? Oh, we're going to do both, brother. We're gonna, you, you think uh, Dominic and Ray got nothing on us? <laughs> we're going to give you guys a, a drama. 
we didn't have a lot of drama. We got a lot of drama we can air out in the wrestling. And the wrestling storylines between me and him and all that, it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. That's something we, that we do want to do, work together, work against each other. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it is a three match that we want to have before it's over with him. All right, uh, and then mon- Monday the 25th, Monday interviews at the end of the month, every month now. Uh, that's a new thing. Um, Monday the 25th, we have Fox. Uh, the Tuesday the 26th, we have Honest John. The 27th, we have um, Izzy B. On uh, April 2nd, we have uh, Nathan Lizardman, Nathan Nile. The third, we have uh, Zeke and Dino. On the ninth, we have uh, Nahiro Robles. On the tenth, we have Aisa Raymond. On the sixteenth, we have Joey Mayberry. On the seventeenth, we have Mitch Clark. Twenty third, Livia Vale. Twenty fourth, we have Kristara. On the thirtieth, we have Sexy Eddie, and then on uh, May 1st, we have a uh, Psycho Boy photo. So, um, yeah, uh, April already um, all up, all ready to go, waiting for you guys to listen. All right, um, I think we're done putting ourselves over. And it was a great day for wrestling because we are wrestling with the news. Um, and a big part of the news this week was, um, more information came out about the Vince McMahon allegations from, uh, Janelle Grant. Um, I'm not all privy to all this information, so I will probably hand this off to our resident legal expert, Coleco Yachts. Man, I'm just saying, it's... It's getting steamy, man. I, I, I'm i just going to figure out, the question is, when is this thing going to go to trial? And it's going to be a matter of whether, it's going to be clearly, obviously, there's a civil suit, but they're trying to debate if there's going to be any legal implications as far as from a federal standpoint. But, I mean, he's in a lot of hot water. As you can see, he's selling shares like crazy. One, because his image is kind of tarnished too. He's going to need it for the legal. So it, it's, it's coming. It, it's not even a matter of if at this point, it's a matter of when. Well, um, I don't know if you saw or not, but, um, there was, um, it was revealed that, um, Nick Khan and another, um, employee of WWE did know about Janelle Grant and, um, her exploits with Vince McMahon. Well, the question is, what? Here's the question: What they knew and when they knew it, and and until those that answer can get question, uh, that question can get answered, because everything in the affidavits or in the legal sense, it doesn't mention them. However, it would be hard for them to kind of. <sighs> How about because you have to show bit uh, without reasonable doubt that they knew, and the issue with that is is that Nick Khan can make the argument he was running the executive side, i.e., TV side, global side, and not brand side, or not day to day wrestling side. So you have to to link link those those in. You have to link Nick Khan to to that information, right? You can link to him because he was Vince's right-hand man, but you can't link. That doesn't mean that he would have known or been privy to the information. No. Um, the uh, new legal documents came out, uh, and um, she introduced herself um, to Nick Khan, and he said, oh, I know already who you are. Um, oh. Oh. Yeah, um, keep in mind, I only, like, grazed through it, so I don't, she's not necessarily accusing him of anything, 
but she is implying that he did know what was going on. Well, knowing what's going on, and <sighs> here's the thing: if he knew what was going on, and the the issue would be. Technically, he's kind of in a power to where he could kind of stop it. Um, but there's no sense of implicating Nick unless he actually committed a crime. Right? Him knowing, it, in essence, is kind of... It's almost like you're trying to say, oh, he knew, therefore it's a crime. But he knew through another person. So technically, it could be known as hearsay, right? Oh, I know who you are because so-and-so told me. that That's not, you know what I mean? Okay, it was uh, Nick Khan and uh, uh, Brad Bloom were the two um, revealed as key figures in Vince McMahon's sex trafficking lawsuit. Define key figure. Was he, and that's where, this is where it's going to get if, iffy for Janelle. Because Vince is already in the hook. Brock seemed to be kind of, based on being back in on the roster, out of the hook. <laughs> and and that's where it comes down to. It's It's, yeah, you can implicate somebody in it, but did they actually do it? Right? Do we have that key evidence to show that they actually did it? Or did Nick Khan do anything to you in further, what's that word? Preponderance. Now, granted, she has a strong case against Vince. No doubt. No fucking doubt. Um, the biggest issue, and maybe even Stephanie, in the sense that if she did an investigation and it was known and there was nothing done about it, she might have a better case that on those ends than trying to web everyone else in WWE. Well, we shall see if um, something more comes um, comes of this. It seems like more and more um, information is coming out as we um, we head down the road of um, you know the trial or whatever is going to happen. Yeah, if there's going to be a trial date. And that's the other thing, the other piece, because clearly he's doing it as a civil. The question is, is, is all this going to be moot events, a.k.a. events settles? And if he settles, and B, if the feds get into it, it kind of is both. So... It, you know, so it, it it's that part of the game. Now, so we'll see. Well, on the opposite end of um of uh, the spectrum, um, Sasha Banks, uh, Janelle Monet, um, has made her debut for AEW. Yay? Question mark. I mean, let's see. It everyone knew it was coming. I think everyone knew it was coming in Boston. Right. So those aren't the surprising part. Surprising part is I heard it's ten mil. That's surprising. <laughs> you know. So is she going to be the needle mover? Uh, <laughs> And this is where it is with Sasha. She's a really good person, a really great star, has a somewhat good following. Will that following follow her into AEW? Honestly, I'm just glad she's back because that injury at New Japan, I think, were you there? Yeah. As well? Yeah, yeah. so you saw that. So that her to come back and even wrestle is a miracle. Right. But. You know, my problem with Sasha always has been, she, is Sasha a big star? Yes. Is she the biggest star of all time? Only in her mind. 
And it's going to be. Yeah, do you think so? Huh? I, I wouldn't think in her mind she's the biggest star. She really is. She's the biggest name they have so thus far. Oh, in AEW, yeah. But, you know, in WWE, she wouldn't have been, you know, the center of attention. Which is, you know, she says money is not, you know, wasn't the key factor. Obviously, it wasn't. But, you know, it's always about how she wants to be presented. You know what I mean? Uh, I kind of don't buy that. Because from the numbers, if they are true, 10 mil, that tells me a lot. Of, that is a lot about the money, homie. Like, if if WWE was giving her Brock Lesnar money, do you really think she would have left? Hmm, that's a good question. Um... You know what? Probably but she leveraged what she had. So, I mean. Well, you know, I mean, you got Tony She leveraged Khan. it. Good job. I mean, Tony Khan is going to, you know, he's an endless pit of money. So, you know, he's going to give you what you feel you think you'll want. WWE has. Uh, I doubt that. Because if that's the case, MJF felt like he was probably worth right around that range. Well, I mean, uh, MJF is not a former WWE superstar that main main event at WrestleMania. As number one in my all greatest women of all time show, make sure we check that out. Shameless plug. We gotta play it, right? Uh. <laughs> well, but uh, we'll see. It, I mean, she's back. The question is, she's going. Out. I don't know if that's just to get like her in the groove to the women's title because it's like, are they gonna give her the same formula? Jump in, go get the AEW title. Then go, but the problem is Tony Storm is still stuck with Diana, so that's not gonna happen. So that's the only title they got her going for, TBS title. Well, I mean, obviously she didn't come to not win a title, you know. I, I mean, maybe that could be different. That could be different too. I'm just wondering, are they going to? Give Sasha what she wants, despite a Tony Storm being their biggest star. No, Tony Storm's their biggest in grown. Tony's their biggest star as of late. Sasha is their biggest star right now. And the and the thing is, is that um, Sasha, I don't think. They gave Sasha what she wanted, which was the money. The money. That's what she cared about more than anything. Personally, I I think her looking strong, I mean, that could be a a, a concern of hers, but that's secondary to quote unquote 10 mil a year. Well, um, I was wondering, you know, do you think that Charles Banks moves the needle in the words of Roman Reigns? <clears throat> well, it's, it's hard to say because... <sighs> If Tony doesn't move a needle, I mean, Tony's their biggest star, and she's not, like, the needle mover that, you know what I mean? Right. Like, how can she be the needle? How can Sasha be a needle mover when Tony is there and literally has people put, like, she's practically the best kayfabe person that they got, and she's not even really kind of pushing it. 
MJF really wasn't even need, moving the needle like that. So <clears throat> the question is, is that is Sasha going to bring some of that cult WWE following that follow her to the ends of the earth to the TV? And that is going, that is the ultimate question, to be quite honest, at the end of the day. Can she, like a Becky, draw a to the two to that show? Um, you know that's a good question. We will see because so far, because so far, you can make the argument. And one can make the argument that since she left, it hasn't really been the same. What do you mean by that? Like, she went to New Japan. Did New Japan's needle move as much as we thought it would? That's a good the question. show in Long Beach. I mean, I, I mean, these are these are legit questions. I'm not, and and that's not a, a knock. That's not to knock Sasha, right? It's not saying that oh, Sasha sucks or whatever the case may be. It's just the fact that she went out because she felt like she could get more being a bigger draw than what she is. And right now, so far in New Japan, I mean. Up until the injury, it was remained to be seen, right? Right. So that's where the question mark is. Because she only was wrestling a handful of shows. And then we were, of course, we were at the Long Beach show where she fucked her leg up. So, well, how many people so were we there just, personally for Sasha Banks and not, you know, the full show? I mean, Moxley and O'Connor was on that show. Right. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. who would have knew that was Okada's last time in the States with New Japan? But, uh... It wasn't. I'm just saying, like, one of his fewest last yeah. times. One of his... Fair enough. But, uh... But what I'm saying... But what I'm saying is, is like... <clears throat> even then, she wasn't AEW. She was just, like, free agent. Right? Kind of like how Willow was free agent. Uh-huh. You know, so it's that forbidden door shit that you know Tony calls it. I mean, a pig and slap is still a pig, but it. But the problem is, is that it was just more like we didn't know where she's. We knew she was there. Was she there as a New Japan representative? And that is, I could say, is a no. Because it was only a handful of matches. Now that she's actually AEW, will she be that person? I'm glad that she's back, and I'm glad that we can find that out. Well, I do have um, the ratings um, for um, AEW that for um, that specific show. Um, that first quarter that you know had Sasha Banks in it. Um, Eight to eight fifteen, um, it had a hundred million views, viewers. Uh, the next quarter, a um, hundred million viewers, one million. Oh, one man! I was about to say that's like Super Bowl numbers, or yeah, it's just um, <laughs> just a million. <laughs> the next one, you know, the uh, next what uh 15 minutes of the show had hold on um it was eight eight thousand nine hundred and ninety nine I could be completely off on that um just uh just to um kind of do it in uh ratings talk the one, uh, the one million is a zero point thirty two, and 
the next the next one underneath underneath it was a zero point uh twenty nine. And then it just kinda goes down from there. Twenty seven, twenty four, twenty seven, twenty nine, twenty six, and it ends um with a twenty two, um, which is its lowest numbers. Um a little over six million. So what is that uh -huh. trying to tell you? That it just kind of continuously t took a landslide from, you know, a hundred million to six million. But that just kind of tell. But then again, we kind of knew she was coming. So that I mean, and that's where you have to factor it in. You have to factor in the fact that everyone knew that she was coming because it's Boston, right? Right. So. How much of that is pre-hype on the internet because people kind of knew it was coming, especially when they thought it was last week, so they knew it was going to be next week. Right. What I want to know is, you know, it's all going to be glitter, uh, glitter and gold with Sasha now because, you know, she's the new girl, you know. And, you know, they're going to give her everything that she wants. And believe me, they are going to give her everything that she wants. My well, she's the flavor of the month. Like, like Deanna. Deanna was the flavor of the month. She's the flavor of the month. Well, uh, Deanna didn't get the gold. <laughs> Sasha is getting the gold, and we both know that. Uh, no, but what I'm saying is, is that Deanna... Was the flavor in the month as far as the hype is concerned? My question is, there's a different ideology when it comes to AEW um, with these girls. You know, we've we've done numerous you know segments on oh the women there's drama with the women. This girl doesn't like this girl. This one doesn't feel this one belongs. Uh, Dunder Rosa, Britt Baker. Ah, uh, I can't imagine Sasha isn't going to get caught up in that. And the biggest question is, is it right now? But when she has to do that job, is she going to take the ball and go home? I mean, she didn't do it for Bianca, so... <sighs> I mean, she could you know have been at SummerSlam. But that was something. No, um. Because if that was the case, then she would have took her ball and went home for all five wins and immediate championship losses that she had. <laughs> right? Well, her, so that's where in her defense, I give her the benefit of the doubt. Back then. I guess it's just yet to be seen. I don't think I don't think it I don't think that's gonna be an issue. I'm interested to see how where this goes because I don't necessarily see it going in a positive light for uh Miss Monet. Alright. Um I think we'll uh go from the money to um Darby Allen, he uh, broke his foot on Dynamite, and uh, he will not be climbing Mount Everest uh, at the ending of this month. So, uh, isn't that fucking stupid that the man literally put himself through a plank of glass with spine and normal match on AEW broke his foot? Like, what the fuck? like that alligator hunter, that crocodile hunter getting killed by right. the shit you don't see coming. <laughs> well, I suppose he It's always the shit you don't see coming. It's always the shit you don't see coming. He expected to dive off of that. So he was prepared for it. 
Now he broke his foot. So now, next year. In the meantime, he can still kill himself, get better, come back, wrestle a couple matches, get his cardio up. Maybe he'll, uh, maybe this was a blessing in disguise for him. Uh, because, you know, he was he was going to jump off Mount Everest. He was going to die. We all know that. He ain't jumping off no damn Mount Everest. No plane to glass is that. going to catch him at that height. Nope. Ain't no coffin dropping off for that shit. All right. Oh. Um, not, not happening. A very interesting bit of news that came out this week. Um, Shayna Baselaw announced for um, Josh Barnett's uh, blood sport for WrestleMania weekend. What does something like that mean? Means that she's possibly favored to win. <laughs> well, I mean, that's obvious. <laughs> I, I, I mean, she's, I mean, she's got the skill. Although, you know, she goes again up again. Her versus Sienna in Bloodsport would be an interesting matchup, but um, it, I don't know. It just shows that Triple H kind of has this pulse on the globalization of wrestling. And, I mean, it's not going to harm or hurt anybody. So. Well, uh, it wasn't a GCW show that Ronda Rousey showed up at. Um, That was just the show in California. Um, Yeah. Random ass show in California like that. I think it was Prestige, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Oh. But what does that kind of say about Shayna Baszler? You know, it's the biggest weekend, the biggest week for pro wrestling. Oh, what, we don't need to go to blood sport. I mean, is it the same day as WrestleMania? Well, that's good questions. I'm not exactly sure, but... Because if it's not, then it just gives them shit to do. But then again, it's... That's... I mean... It's a no harm, no foul. I mean... And who know, who's to say Shayna... Who, and who's to say Shayna didn't ask for it? Well, my question is, who asked her to be... Uh, a part of blood sport like I mean that's a big you know ask for you know your show I could have been Josh Barnett I mean I mean I don't know about you but the Kumite so it's it's a big deal the Kumite blood sport Kumite Taku Kum. But I think it's something. I think it's cool. A different matchup. It's a matter of who she's gonna go against. Um, is she gonna win this damn thing? Um, it's not like you. She's just a pro wrestler going in there. It's not like it's uh. It'd be different if it was Maxine Dupree, <laughs> right? Because I'm looking at that. Because if it was Maxine Dupree, I'm like, she's about to get slaughtered. But the fact that it's someone who acts... uh, Sacrificial lamb. You... So so not a slaughter. So not a slaughter. (laughs) But any... But anything else, the fact that she actually has the MMA background is interesting. Do you see that WWE might do this with, you know, other wrestlers for WrestleMania weekend? Have them go on, like, the GCW shows? Like, um, uh, what's the one called? For the Culture and, uh, Effie's Big Game. Oh, Dance? yeah, For the Culture. I... For the Culture. Ooh, that's... It depends on who they would put for For the Culture. I mean, it's like... The Hurt Business went to follow the culture. I think that would be an interesting dichotomy, right? Right. Um, 
Yeah, I, I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, because to be quite honest, they are. I mean, if you've seen them WWE World and VIP prices, they kind of already got their market set. So they might as well expand the bitch. <laughs> you think this is WWE capitalizing on WW uh, WrestleMania weekend because usually they uh, these smaller shows capitalize on WrestleMania. Now it's kind of dis- the roles are reversed and they're capitalizing on these GCW shows or whatever other shows are happening in that um, in that area. Well, it's kind of different because last year was the West Coast, so they could kind of hold some of downtown L.A. on lock, and the fact that WrestleMania was in Inglewood, uh, they, they had everything else in between was based on wrestling. Right. Like, out, ostracized indie wrestling, right? So, you can make the argument it is them kind of going on the offensive with a couple of stars. Uh, can make the offense the the um the argument that it's the indies taking advantage of using these talents. So it's just a matter of what perspective. But either way, it's a win win for everybody. Because I mean, Shayna Baszler at Bloodsport, like I would go because I'm like, oh, she'll knock somebody out for real. Especially if she's wrestling <laughs> Masha. You know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta see who she gonna go up against. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, speaking of WrestleMania, uh, you know, a lot of matches have been announced. Um, Bronson Reed actually made a challenge to somebody we haven't seen in quite some time. And that is Big E. He challenged him to be in a match with two me- big men slapping me, re- dubbing WrestleMania Meat Mania. Um, is this, you know, a viable, you know, is there a substance here, or is this Bronson just kind of rocking the boat? Um, it's hard to say, right? I, I would love to see Big E back. I just want to make sure he's back in the best of terms. Okay. Um, um, so until they clear him, then it's a shot in the dark. Because easily it could be him and Omos or him and uh, Ridge Holland, him and Sheamus, him. And, you know what I mean? There's a lot of big goods on that roster. Well, Seamus is on the list, La- too, if I'm not mistaken. Um, him and uh, Lashley, him and a- one of the AOP cats, him. You know what I mean? Right. a lot of big dudes out there, bitch. So maybe it's a welcome back Biggie, like welcome back Cotter style. But uh, if he does come, that'd be one hell of a pop. That's for sure. It will be interesting to see if um, any of this develop uh, this Monday on Raw. Um, you know, if it's not, then, you know, it kind of sucks that Bronson Reed wouldn't, wouldn't get a match on WrestleMania. I mean, they still got the Battle Royals, but it's two nights. So now a lot of things are, you know what I mean? It's not like... Um... It's not like it's one night and they have to cram everything. Right. They have time to actually, you know. So. It does seem like they're maybe adding an extra hour to the show. Because uh, the last, like, three years, WrestleMania was three hours um, each night, which was, what, six hours in total, I would say? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with an extra hour each, which, I mean, it's eight hours of pro wrestling, um, you know, a, a little bit too much, I would say, but um, we shall see if what that entails. 
Um, and then yeah. another thing that's happening this Monday on uh, Raw is the contract signing between Sami Zayn and um, Gunther. Um, not a lot of people were happy that um, Sami Zayn won the gauntlet match. People were more leaning towards Chad Gable. Um, you know, that was the story. Gable, um, Gable started crying and him wanting to rectify that. Why did they even bring those past things up if they knew Gable wasn't going to win the match? And did you think, do you think that they expected that there would be such a backlash? Um, this is the part where WWE shot itself in the foot with it because some of Gunther's best matches and some of the closest calls he had was with Chad Gable. So it would have made sense, especially considering he was out of the running for the title since that last title shot that he would be back, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> in the mix as a, as a good callback. That would have been a great way to get the callback. Uh, but to be quite honest, it's a mix of Sammy being one of the most popular stars in, in the WWE, regardless of that reaction. So I think that reaction was more of you led us to believe that Gable could do it, and then right when we thought he could do it and actually get the opportunity to actually do it, you throw the monkey wrench in the middle. Basically the opposite of Kobe, Cody Rhodes. Now, with, unlike this one, they could rectify it and make a triple threat out of it instead of having to, you know, roll it all out, right? I mean, does it make if Gunther loses the match, uh, the title in a triple threat rather than, you know, a singles match, does that make that victory a little less sweet? Well, who's to say it has to happen at WrestleMania? Because Gunther can retain and Gable wins the next night in a rematch. Um, because to me, it doesn't... To me, with Gable, I as much as people want it to happen at WrestleMania, I think that, that would be a great way to kick it off. Um, you know, so I'm not sure. Sami Zayn doesn't necessarily need the Intercontinental Champion. Championship. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't think he's going to win it because... If Owens is going to beat Logan, Zane is not beating Gunther. Well, who said Owens was beating uh, Paul? Hmm? You said what? I was saying, who said that Kevin Owens was going to beat Logan Paul? It is a triple threat between him, Orton, and Paul. That's why I think Kevin, I mean, Kevin Owens is winning. Orton is just there because let's get you on the card to make some money. Um, but, but we, because, that, that's a whole other debate for a whole other day. Um, but I don't know. I kind of feel like if Chad Gable gets dropped into that match. It needs to be a singles match, not a triple threat. Uh, it just seems like this... Everyone says wrestling. that until, like, Daniel Bryan. They, they didn't care about Daniel Bryan when it was a triple threat. I mean, Randy Orton was in champion for overnight, almost 900 days. I mean, 2022? Hello? Oh, no, 2021. Triple threat threw himself in there. Well, um, it just seems like WWE, you know, they, 
obviously they had a clear mindset of what WrestleMania 40 was going to be. Obviously, they needed to pivot because of, you know, allegations and whatnot. It just seems like all, all the decisions they've made since they've had to pivot have been the wrong decisions. You know what I mean? Um, we say that in hindsight. Well, I mean... that. That is what I can say. That is a hindsight. We say that in hindsight um, because of the simple fact that when they made that decision, a lot of the decisions that they made thought it was going to be the best decision. But 90% of the decisions that they made wouldn't have been even a thing had injuries not played a pivotal part in this. Right. Well, maybe something will be rectified and Chad Gable will get his WrestleMania moment. I mean, some not everything it- has to be rectified. It, it, here's the thing. Just because it doesn't happen when we want it, it'll happen on the right time. That's what I, my grandpa always said to me. It may not happen when you want it to, but it'll happen right on time. And who's to say when, when the right on time comes? Well, uh, do you think we're over right on time with Ricochet? Maybe. (laughs) I mean, it doesn't get more you're somebody's bitch than this guy literally telling you that your your fiancé is going to say my name after I beat your ass, which she did. And never, and didn't get that, didn't get that come up, didn't get that return match. You would have thought it happened at WrestleMania, yeah. but, you know, the guy was as cold as a freezer. Well, because everyone was more on his wife to be than on him. Then that's that. just... <laughs> Then that's more on him. Not a problem. Not a knock on him. Oh no, it's definitely. I mean, but he won in life. It's one hundred percent a knock on him because if he can't get over more on than his announcer fiance, then he has a major problem. No, he doesn't. Because he gets to go home with her. He won. Well. Keeping up with the Alpha Academy, um, last once again on Raw, uh, Travis Luray freaks out on Maxine Dupree and pulls a Christian on her, and literally tells her that her brother is dead. Needless to say, the internet um reacted. No, Kalika. When has the internet never reacted? Thank you. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's... Eh, 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 it's been worse. <laughs> There's been worse. People are more... I'm going to put it like this. Black folks are more upset that WWE is tone deaf because Memphis was yelling, whoop that trick, and they thought they were talking about Trick Williams and not the actual song, whoop that trick, that came from Hustle and Flow 20, damn it, 20 years ago. (laughs) So that tells me everything I need to know about the internet. Well, I mean, I would imagine Trick Williams took it as a W. Yeah, because WWE was like, even in Memphis, Trick Williams getting the response. And I'm just looking at him like, you missed that boat so long ago, sir. So, what is this leading to, Coleco? Is Candice LeRae going to be wearing um, a turtleneck without sleeves and telling everybody that their families are dead and she's their mother now? Are we leading to a um, Mother Wayne versus Candice LeRae match 
for WrestleMania weekend? I mean, it seems that way. I, I mean, they're just trying to get shock factor. I mean, just damn. Got to get somebody going. People got to get some stories popping. This but not every story could be a winner. So, I mean, this isn't Vince Russo. I just think this was the wrong storyline for the wrong people. Um, nobody believes the... Uh, the little tough muffin pixie is going to be so killer that she mentioned, you know, dead relatives. Well, they didn't put her in that position to even do so. Like, it's more believable from Asuka than <laughs> who doesn't speak English because she's been a stone cold killer the whole damn time. Oh, yeah. And so mention all your dead relatives and you won't even <clears throat> know it. <laughs> Right. So. Me. That brings us to um, the Prime logo that will be on WWE match for every PLE going um, forward. Um, you knew this, is, this was happening. Come on, man. This is the first time WWE ever had... Um, on the mat advertisement ever. Um, how do you feel about that? I saw that coming when they merged with TKO. I mean, what do you with UFC? That's basically UFC's main gimmick. It's basically a way to make money on equipment that has to be used anyway. It's been that way forever with UFC, the Marine Corps. Especially with the uh, with UFC, they had like the Marine Corps. They had Mickey's as a sponsor, and Mickey's, if you know, is like Mickey's old English, Mickey's forties. So I mean, anything to get that bread, it'll 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 get there. And Prime is probably one of the hottest <clears throat> brands anyway. So why not? It's not like that stuff tastes better than proper number twelve. Does it look a little tacky? Depends on how they put it. If it's like prime in like, let me say like, it depends on where they put it. If it's like on the apron, it's going. To it be may not. You know what I mean? Room. If you saw, oh well then. So it's just one big word in the middle of the ring. I don't know. I kind of feel it's it's a little tacky. Um, you know, UFC does that, obviously. You know, um, we've had matches, you know, um, sponsored by, you know, a specific brand or thing, and that's fine. But I kind of like my mat clean, if I'm being honest. Um, you know, I'm not upset with them. I'm just kind of, all right, yeah, so whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you're kind of over it. I know where they're getting, they're or, going, coming from. I Obviously, they got paid a monumental amount of money to do it. Um, pretty but much. I don't have to be happy about it either. That, that is true. Do not have to be happy. Um, that brings us to another bit of news coming out of not pro wrestling, but the Oscars. John Cena completely <laughs> naked at the Oscars. Kaliko? No, I'm not. I, I mean, he took one for the team. Oh, the team of Team Hollywood, that's for sure. Uh, I, eh, it is what it is, right? Like, is that is that just me? <laughs> it is what it is. That is all I can say about it, because. 
Hold what on. else can we say about it? <laughs> um. Well, uh, I can't say that um, the uh the boy in the Haran won um best animated film. Um, which actually included Batista as one of the voice actors. So, uh, Batista. So he has an Oscar. Yeah, Batista was in a um, Oscar-winning movie. That's something John Cena and The Rock cannot say. No. But John Cena and The Rock could give a shit about Oscars. No, The Rock has said in the past that he uh, he's been wanting an Oscar, that he's looked at Oscars. I mean, you could. Well, then he would take more serious roles instead of trying to be the hero guy that just fucks everyone over. (laughs) Well, that's to say that the. Am I missing? Am am I miss? I'm missing something here. That's to say that the Rock can actually act and not act play any other character that is the Rock with a different name. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Right. We we agree. I mean, the the most acting I've ever seen him do, do was in um was the longest the, yard. Jumanji. I was gonna say he played an old person. Jesus Christ, Jumanji! Not even the movie based on a true story. Jumanji. Yeah. Oh gosh, help us, God! Oh God, help us! Help I mean, us. he literally played Danny DeVito. How? How many people say, say can say they played Danny DeVito in a movie? Uh, anybody? Well, um, that's a good segue to the to continuing on the rock. Um. If you haven't noticed, The Rock has been taking liberties when it comes to using profanity in his interview, uh, in his promos. Um, a lot of the WWE talent are starting to feel that this may be a double standard that, you know, they obviously can't use profanity, but, you know, it seems like literally every week The Rock is spitting out obsidity, acidity versus obsidity. Does The Rock get a pass because he's The Rock, or should he be played ball, considering that crossing in promos isn't necessarily the wisest route to go when it comes to the promos? Um... It's more about he's the boss. I mean, maybe you should just own the company and then your ass wouldn't have to worry about it. I mean, that's that's part of the gig. I mean, they say life ain't fair. Life is like it's not fair. Well, life ain't fair. Shit. Kind of knew this, right? But, I mean, it kind of seems like, in my opinion, You only curse when you don't have something good to say. You know what I mean? Well, that could be the case. But at this point, this guy, he's the man. It's his company. I mean, he basically told him, I'm your boss. Don't like it, put it up with him. Well, nothing. And that brings us. Am I missing something? Is that, am I missing something there? I mean, you're not missing anything, but you know, if you're a good boss, don't you want to lead by example and not piss off all your employees? Like, you know. Bro, I mean, he got that fucking. Gig to be like, not lead by example. What the hell? Bro, the moment he got on that board, I was like, oh, he's putting all his family over. If you didn't think that was going to happen, y'all must have not been reading from the wrong tea leaves because he's doing what anyone else would have done. Vince did it. 
Triple H would have done it if he, well, maybe not Triple H, but Vince did it. Rock would do it. Anyone would do it. I mean, Triple H is, in, is literally in charge of creative, so, and he didn't do it. That's what I'm saying. He didn't, as I said, scratch Triple H, but everyone else, like The Rock, hell yeah. Mm. Because he's going to be like, yo, my family is the reason you're even in business. So I'm about to put all these niggas on. Nepotism at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. That we could agree on. And that brings <laughs> us to our last bit of news. And that is uh, Russo slash Miro has finally divorced. Lana slash the CJ Perry the Platypus. And does that make this the greatest state for pro wrestling, Coleco? Mm, I mean, if you're the guy trying to jump on it, sure. And would not a lot of people not? I am assuming no. Okay. So. Well. So, we'll see. Miro, He's back in Bulgaria, I heard, so. I did not hear that. Um, Rusev, um, well, Miro, as they call him now, uh, no longer has a god or a hot, flexible wife. So, we shall see, uh, what his new gimmick in AEW will be. We will. Alright. I believe that will conclude uh, the news in this episode uh, as a whole. Uh, thank you for um, listening. If you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, but on YouTube and Castbox. This was sponsored by Rose Energy and Fair One Coffee. Join us uh, this Tuesday and Wednesday as we interview uh, Jeremy Prophet and Godfather of Swole. And follow the show at Wrestling the E, but on Extra and Instagram for information on who we're interviewing, when we're interviewing them, links to those interviews, and so much more. Follow me personally at JamesJ993. Where can we find Coleco? And I'm Coleco. Why are we not going to talk about the. Uso versus Uso match and how there's this thing on Twitter where every 15 years there's been a brother versus brother match. I think that's pretty interesting. But as a there's been a brother versus brother match for 15 years? Yes. Yeah, so, prime example, WrestleMania 10 was the brother versus brother match was... Owen and Brett. 15 years later, WrestleMania 25, the brother versus brother match was... Uh, Matt Hardy vs. Seth Hardy. And this year, 15 years later, the brother vs. brother match is... Jimmy vs. Shay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, we I knew think that's that dope. Was coming. We knew it was coming, but we... I mean, we saw it coming, but I think that's cool that they... that there's a... a, a special nuance to the brother vs. brother match, because I would have thought there would have been more. <laughs> Um, there probably is, but just not at WrestleMania. Ah, uh, true, true, true. Alright. Um, for Coleco Yachts and Scooter Dust, I'm James J, and this has been Wrestling with Entertainment. Hey, folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show. Support these guys. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.